It is my honor to introduce Andrew. Oh, I can share. Who, what, what? Yes, very oh, good. So you, uh -huh. uh, and uh, he uh, who was um, uh, a student uh, uh, at NYU, and now he's in San Diego. And he got world famous by uh, solving the other second mm -hmm. problem that uh, Neither Erdős nor Szekeres nor another thousand people uh, 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 was able to solve. There is still a little bit of room for improvement. So, but 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 that's good because that's uh, why the problem will stay in circulation and uh, Andrew's fame will grow and grow. <laughs> hopefully for another whatever fifty years. So at any rate, uh, it's, it's great to have him in Moscow, uh, Moscow, California, Budapest, whatever, and um, and he, he will uh, speak about uh, um, stepping up, no, about uh, Ramsey numbers mm -hmm. and stepping up, right? Yeah, not much. This will be a light talk, so I'll, I'll say a little bit about that at the end. So. It'll be light and short. <laughs> so, okay. So let me, I'm trying to adjust so the people are not blocking my sc screen. Okay, maybe this is good enough. Okay, so thank you for um, inviting me to speak in this seminar. Um, so I'll be talking about Ramsey numbers and an old problem of Erdos and Heinel. So Ramsey theory was discovered by Frank Ramsey back in 1928, and it was rediscovered by Paul Erdos and George Zakaresh uh, a few years later in 1935. And so it's about these things called Ramsey numbers, which I will define on this slide here. So given integers uh, k, s, and n, such that s and n is at least k, the Ramsey number is this thing here, this RKSN, and it's the minimum integer big N such that if you consider the first capital N integers, so if you look at the set here, one through capital N, and then if you color every K tuple in the set with either the color red or the color blue, then you'll have either S integers such that every k tuple among them has the color red, or you'll have little n integers such that every k tuple among them has the color blue. And so what Ramsey's theorem says is that these Ramsey numbers here do indeed exist for every such uh, k, s, and n. And perhaps maybe the most famous results about Ramsey numbers or a classical result is this one here due to Erdos and Zekres who proved this uh, upper bound for graph Ramsey numbers. So this is the case when K equals two. So they proved that it's at most this quantity over here. And if you want to kind of simplify your situation by insisting that S here uh, equals to N, then we have what's uh, frequently called the diagonal Ramsey number the diagonal graph Ramsey number, R2NN. And uh, this shows that this function here is basically at most uh, four to the N. So I know everybody has seen uh, the proof of this upper bound here, um, but what I thought I would like to do um, just to start off my talk is to just quickly sketch a greedy algorithm that shows that um, four to the n is an upper bound for the diagonal Ramsey number R2NN. So the greedy algorithm runs as follows. So you just take the integers one through four to the n and suppose every edge or every pair of vertices has the color uh, red 
or blue, then what you can do is you can look at this very first vertex here, look at all of the edges going forward. And by pigeonhole, at least half of these edges will have the same color. So let's say it's red. And then what we'll do is we'll keep the endpoints of these red edges here, and then we'll delete all of the other vertices. And uh, since we kept just the red edges emanating out of one, we'll now color one with um, the color red. And then we repeat the same procedure on the remaining vertices. So we take the next remaining vertex, which is three, look at all of the edges emanating out of it going forward. Again, by pigeonhole, at least half of these edges have the same color. So let's say it's blue. And then since we kept just the blue edges, we color this vertex with the color blue. And uh, we, you know, we just keep repeating this over and over. <clears throat> so since we have four to the n vertices, and since we're dividing by two at each step, we can run this algorithm we can run this algorithm two n times. And after two n steps, we'll have two n vertices. Uh, each vertex will be colored red or blue by the algorithm. And at this point, I can just apply pigeonhole. Or in other words, I can apply Ramsey's theorem for one uniform hypergraph and conclude that n of these vertices will have the same color. And then these n vertices here would form my monochromatic clique. So in this case, I have n red vertices, which would form a uh, right clique on n vertices. <clears throat> and so that's roughly the idea of why you would get 4 to the n uh, as an upper bound for the diagonal graph Ramsey number. So, uh, so we have four to the n as an upper bound for this diagonal graph Ramsey number. And it's a famous result of Erdos using the probabilistic method back in 1947 uh, that shows that it's at least this quantity over here. And as of today, uh, these are currently the best known upper and lower bounds, the lower bound due to Spencer. And somewhat recently, the upper bound was improved by Saw and uh, so it's these quantities here and here. Um, but unfortunately, you know, after all this time, it's still somewhere roughly between two to the n over two and four to the n. <clears throat> okay, so now if you wanted to get an upper bound for RKNN, I don't know if you can see it. So the title of my talk has kind of the, the, the punchline, but it's covered by the Zoom thing. But so if you wanted to get a general upper bound for Ramsey numbers for K uniform hypergraphs, <clears throat> what you can do is you can generalize that simple greedy argument that we just went over. And instead of looking at edges emanating out of a vertex, since we have K tuples, you look at uh, edges emanating out of a K minus one tuple. And when you do this generalization, this is actually um, more frequently called the erdos rado upper bound argument or the erdos rado greedy argument. And basically what happens when you generalize that greedy argument to k-uniform hypergraphs, you start with a k-uniform hypergraph in which every edge has the color red or blue. You apply this greedy algorithm, which will basically cost one exponential but you reduce the problem from a K uniform hypergraph problem to a K minus one uniform hypergraph problem, just like what we saw in the previous algorithm. Uh, so this reduction costs one exponential. And so therefore you can get this general upper bound for Ramsey numbers for K uniform hypergraphs, which is at most this quantity here, which is roughly two to the Ramsey number of K minus one uniform hypergraphs. <clears throat> And so this means that since we know uh, four to the n is, uh, if you just take the best known upper bound for graph Ramsey numbers, R2NN, this means that for three uniform hypergraphs, we know that this is going to be at most double exponential in n. And then if you apply the greedy algorithm again, 
This means that for four uniform hypergraphs, this would be at most triple exponential in N. And for general K uniform hypergraphs, uh, this Ramsey number here will be at most an exponential tower of height K with a C times N in the topmost exponent. <clears throat> So these quantities here are simply what you get from that greedy algorithm. <clears throat> and actually these quantities here are, um, so, these are, so these quantities is what's conjectured to be the correct tower growth rates uh, for these Ramsey numbers. So in the other direction, as we saw earlier, we have this lower bound due to Spencer. So we do know that for graph Ramsey numbers in this diagonal setting, um, it does grow exponentially in N, roughly. Unfortunately, for three uniform hypergraphs, the best known lower bound, um, at least that I'm aware of, is 2 to the N squared, which is simply what you would get by using the probabilistic method. And so as you can see, there's a really large gap between the upper and lower bounds for R3NN. Uh, they're basically off by one exponential. And it's a big open problem um, to try to close this big exponential gap. And I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, later. Um, so it's believed that the upper bound is the truth and any improvements in the lower bound here uh, would be quite important because it would essentially affect our understanding of all of the other Ramsey numbers down here. So what I'm saying is there's this um, famous lemma, which is uh, known as the erdos heinel stepping up lemma, which basically says that if you have a good lower bound for RKNN, you can get a really good lower bound for RK plus one NN. <clears throat> But unfortunately, this only uh, starts to work when k is at least 3. And so therefore, since this is the best known lower bound for R3NN, which is unfortunately one exponential less than the upper bound, the best known lower bound for R4NN using the erdos heinel stepping up lemma is this quantity here, which is double exponential in a power of n which unfortunately is one exponential less than this upper bound. And by applying the stepping up lemma over and over, uh, for K uniform hypergraphs, the best known lower bound is this quantity here, which is an exponential tower of height K minus one in a power of N. So this entire thing in parentheses, this is at the top uh, K minus one level. <clears throat> okay. So as you can see, kind of the key understanding for understanding these diagonal uh, hypergraph Ramsey numbers falls to this key case here, understanding R3NN. If you improve the upper bound, so if you disprove the conjecture, you can apply the erdos rado upper bound argument to improve all of these upper bounds. And if you improve this lower bound here uh, by applying the erdos heinel stepping up lemma, you would improve all of these lower bounds down here. And so, uh, you know, this is a somewhat famous problem, and it was um, conjectured by Erdos that the upper bound is the truth. Um, he even offered a $500 reward for a proof that R3NN is at least double exponential in N. Um, I, I would say maybe the community is somewhat divided on whether or not the upper or lower bound is the truth, but probably most people believe that the upper bound is the truth. And his conjecture is supported by the fact that if you allow four colors, so if you're allowed to play with four colors, there is a construction that shows that uh, this <clears throat> Ramsey number is at least double exponential in N. Okay, any questions so far? So this is roughly the state of the arts for diagonal uh, hypergraph Ramsey numbers. Andrew, yeah, so um, does it mean that for <coughs> RK of four colors, you have the correct exponents always? Uh, so you have for, the correct for, tower. For, for all, for all uh, K, I mean, not only for three. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with so this because, up. yeah, and then at this point, you can start stepping up. So you, we do know the correct tower growth rate for four colors. Mm -hmm. And for three, there is no such, uh, for three colors, it's not that like RK of N, N, N from some point is uh, the correct tower growth. So for three colors, we don't know the correct tower growth rate. The best lower bound is, um, so instead of N, like you would want in the topmost exponent, there's a log N. No, there's a maybe log squared. No, mm -hmm. so it's two to the N to the log N. Yeah, so there's a log squared, log squared. in the topmost. Mm -hmm. So it's um, slightly stronger than exponential, but pretty far from double exponential. And that's due to mm -hmm. Colin Fox and Sudikov. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so eventually I would like to talk about this old problem of Erdos and Heinel, but um, I'm going to kind of slowly get there by um, now talking about off-diagonal um, hypergraph Ramsey numbers. So now in this setting, uh, the red clique S is considered fixed, and N, the blue clique, is the only parameter tending to infinity. And throughout my talk, k is considered fixed. And so uh, for off-diagonal Ramsey numbers, uh, perhaps maybe the most famous result is this asymptotic solution to R23n. So for graphs, if you want to guarantee a red triangle or a blue clique on n vertices, we know that this is on the order of n squared over log n. And for general fixed S, um, we know that this off-diagonal Ramsey number for graphs is basically polynomial uh, in N, when S is considered to be uh, a fixed constant. <clears throat> OK. And for three uniform hypergraphs, we know that the off-diagonal Ramsey numbers, when S is fixed, is single exponential in a power of N. Um, the upper bound you can just easily get by applying the erdos rado greedy argument, because we know that for graphs, it's polynomial. So for three uniform, it would be at most single exponential in a power of n. And then using uh, a random tournament construction, you can show that this is at least exponential in n. And I believe as of today, the best known upper and lower bounds for the uh, three uniform off-diagonal Ramsey numbers are these quantities here, which are um, due to Colin Fox and Sudikoff. <clears throat> so for graphs, we know it grows polynomial in N. For three uniform hypergraphs, we know it grows exponential in a power of N. And so again, for these upper bounds, you can apply that greedy argument in the general setting, this erdos rado greedy argument. And to show that for four uniform hypergraphs in this off-diagonal setting, this will be at most double exponential in, in a power of n. This would be at most triple exponential in a power of n. And for general k uniform hypergraphs in this off-diagonal setting, when s is fixed, this is at most an exponential tower of height k minus 1 uh, in a power of n. So roughly speaking, um, in this diagonal setting, it's one exponential, sorry, in the off diagonal setting, it's one exponential less than the diagonal setting. <clears throat> okay. And so, as I just mentioned earlier, uh, we know that these are the correct tower growth rates for graphs and three uniform hypergraphs. Unfortunately, for four uniform hypergraphs, we still don't exactly know uh, the tower growth rate. So in particular, we, as of today, we do not know the tower growth rate for R45N. And I'll talk uh, a little bit about this later. However, if you change this five to a seven, um, the lower bound kind of becomes an easier problem. And it's known that uh, R47n is uh, at least double exponential in n. 
And then it was observed by uh, Mubai and myself and Colin Fox and Sudikov that actually at this point, you can start stepping up. So because we know that R47N is at least double exponential in N, this means that you can show that R58N is at least triple exponential in N. And for general K-uniform hypergraphs, because of this R47, you can show that RKK plus 3N grows um, as an exponential tower of height K minus 1 uh, in a power of N. So we do know the correct tower growth rates for, for all of these Ramsey numbers here. <clears throat> and for any S bigger than this, that's, that's fixed. These last two cases though, for RKK plus one N and RKK plus two N, um, it becomes harder. Um, so understanding these Ramsey functions here, um, well, it seems more difficult than understanding these. And just like kind of what we've seen throughout this talk, understanding these Ramsey numbers here essentially boils down to understanding these Ramsey numbers here whether or not they grow single or double exponentially in N. <clears throat> and so actually a few years ago in joint work with Drew Mobai, we were able to show that this Ramsey function here does indeed grow double exponentially in a power of N. And so as a result, that gave us the understanding of the tower growth rate for RKK plus two N. So, we were able to determine that it grows as an exponential tower of height k minus one in a power of n. But unfortunately, we weren't able to show that R45n grows um, double exponentially in n. Um, the best lower bound we were able to get was this quantity here, uh, which is pretty far from the upper bound that uh, we wanted, of course, uh, but Basically, once you get a lower bound for R45N, that gives you, uh, you know, the best lower bound for RKK plus 1N, <clears throat> which is this quantity here, which is essentially one exponential less than uh, the upper bound here. So in some sense, in the off-diagonal setting, um, understanding this function here is kind of the, the key case or the last, um, kind of uh, last key case to understand. Uh, in the diagonal setting, it's R3NN. In the off-diagonal setting, it's this R45N. Uh, both questions are trying to determine whether or not it's single or double exponential in N. <clears throat> and kind of interestingly, um, in joint work with Hubai, we show that there is a relationship between these two open problems. Um, and I'll be a little bit more precise at the very end of my talk, but basically if you can show that R3NN grows at least double exponential in N. So if you can solve this $500 problem of Erdos, then um, that would imply that R45N also grows double exponentially in N. So solving this, this problem of Erdos essentially determines the tower growth rate for all of these uh, Ramsey numbers that have been, that I've been discussing. <clears throat> okay, so now finally, I'd like to talk about this old problem of Erdos and Heinel about um, Ramsey numbers. It, it's basically a, an even more off-diagonal setting <laughs> than the off-diagonal setting. Um, so what am I saying? So this is the off-diagonal Ramsey number we've been looking at. We wanted either a red click on K plus one vertices or a blue click of size N. If you make it more off diagonal by deleting a vertex, then it doesn't become interesting because this is just uh, trivially just N. And so what Erdos and Heinel started studying is basically what happens between this hard problem, understanding this off diagonal Ramsey number and um, this kind of easy problem here. So to be, well, I'll be more precise in the next slide, but um, so instead of a clique on K plus one vertices, uh, you want an almost red clique on K plus one vertices, and you can kind of measure this. 
So that kind of relaxes this condition here or a blue clique of size N, which is the same condition over here. <clears throat> so this here is kind of this, uh, this function that Erdos and Heinel uh, started studying uh, back in the 1970s. So it's kind of a, I don't know, complicated function. So I'll try to ease into it. So this Ramsey function here um, is the minimum integer big N such that, uh, again, if you look at the first capital N integers and every K tuple is colored either red or blue, then um, you want to find, again, K plus one vertices that induces at least T red edges. So T will be in red throughout the rest of this talk. So you want K plus one vertices that doesn't necessarily have to form a clique, but just contains at least T red edges. Or the second condition, which is the same, uh, N vertices uh, such that every K tuple uh, has the color blue. <clears throat> okay, so to kind of ease into this function, we can look at some simple cases. Um, I guess the simplest case was when t equals one. Uh, when t equals one, there's nothing interesting going on here. We know that this is uh, equal to n. So at this extreme, this is a trivial problem. At the other extreme, when t equals k plus one, you're insisting that k plus one vertices has all of the uh, red k tuples. So basically this here is the off diagonal hypergraph Ramsey number. And so, um, and so it appears that this is a hard problem and we don't know the, uh, the tower growth rate for this, this function here. So at one extreme, it's, it's quite trivial. And at the other extreme, it seems to be, um, it seems to be complicated. Okay, so what happens in between? So for example, what happens when t equals two? Uh, well, actually when t equals two, it's quite easy to show that this is at most, um, and I believe this is where Erdos and Heinel showed, is that this is at most polynomial in N because if you have two red edges sharing K minus one vertices, um, then you have this red thing here k plus one vertices with two red edges. Um, and if you don't have two red edges sharing k minus one vertices, then basically you have very few red edges. And then at that point, you can just apply a theorem of Spencer that says, um, it says that basically if you have a few red edges, then you have a big blue clique. And so this is how you would get uh, an upper bound of n to the k minus one. And actually, we, we actually know the asymptotic growth rate for this function, um, actually. But before I get to that, um, so this is what happens when t equals 2. When t equals 3, uh, what would you do? Well, actually, um, if you follow that erdos rado greedy argument again carefully, uh, not only after paying one exponential, not only can you reduce the uniformity by one, but you can actually also reduce this T parameter here also by one. <clears throat> and so this is what Erdos and Heinel observed. And so this means that since when T equals two, this is a uh, polynomial in N, when T equals three, this is going to be at most exponential in a power of N just by using this greedy argument. When t equals four, this will be at most double exponential in a power of n. And when, uh, and for general t, this will be at most um, an exponential tower of high t minus one in a power of n. So again, these are the upper bounds you would get just applying this greedy algorithm that we discussed at the very beginning of the talk. Um, <clears throat> and again, it was conjectured or it is conjectured that uh, these upper bounds here 
um, are the correct tower growth rates for these Ramsey functions here. Um, actually, if you're following this t value carefully, when t equals k, we're already at an exponential tower of high k minus 1, which is the tower growth rate for the upper bound of the off diagonal Ramsey number that we were discussing earlier. And so my point is, is that it's conjectured that um, you know, for each, as t increases, uh, the, quant the, the growth rate for these Ramsey functions increases by one exponential. But when you go from k to k plus 1, um, the tower growth rate uh, is the same. So just maybe this constant here changes. So finding a clique on k plus 1 vertices should be roughly the same as finding a clique on k plus 1 vertices minus an edge. <clears throat> Um, I don't know why they made this conjecture other than this, this is what you would get by applying the greedy algorithm. Um, so actually when t equals two, uh, we know that using results on partial Steiner systems, we know that this is uh, basically n to the k minus one over log n. And for a while, not much was known about the lower bound uh, for this erdos heinel uh, Ramsey function. And then in joint work with Dhruv Mubai, um, we improved the upper bound. We improved this topmost constant C here um, in the upper bound. We didn't change the tower growth rate. We didn't disprove the conjecture. Uh, but we improved the upper bound by getting a better topmost constant. And we got um, a matching lower bound in almost all of the cases or at least the tower growth rate. So we were able to improve that constant uh, in the topmost exponent to k minus t plus one, which might not sound so interesting, but um, it was interesting for us because we got not only a matching uh, lower bound in terms of the tower heights, but we got a topmost exponent that was also very well, it was k minus t plus one when k minus t is even. And when k minus t wasn't even, we got something pretty close to this, uh, to this upper bound here. <clears throat> so not only did we determine the tower growth rate, but we kind of determined it in a, a strong way. Now we didn't do it for all t values, just um, these t values. And remember, as t gets larger, when t equals k plus 1, it becomes that hard, hard problem, the off-diagonal um, off Ramsey number. So for all of these t values, we determine uh, the tower growth rate. But for t equals k minus 1, k, and k plus 1, so these are the last three cases that is not listed in this theorem here. So for these last three cases, so this here is the off diagonal Ramsey number thing, which we didn't uh, say anything more about. So I guess it's kind of these two things here for this erdos heinel problem that's slightly different. Um, and what we showed a couple of years ago was basically these upper and lower bounds here which are, well, this one is off by one exponential and this one is basically off by two exponential. And as you would imagine, uh, you know, the understanding of these Ramsey numbers here, at least back at the time, boiled down to understanding these Ramsey numbers here. So about five uniform hypergraphs and on six vertices, inducing at least four or five edges, or finding a blue clique on little n vertices. <clears throat> so our understanding back at the time was that this was somewhere, again, between single and double exponential in n. And um, our, our understanding of this function was between single and triple exponential in n. So that's why we had this exponential difference here and double exponential difference here. And so um, 
the more and, recent and, results. And, and, and just sorry, so there the, the exponent uh, in the lower bound, the, 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 uh, the number of tower height is the same as for k minus two, right? Like this uh, is for k, so k minus one and k, and uh, for k minus two one. is the same. Uh -huh. For k minus two is the same uh, tower of k minus three, right? For k minus two, when yeah, t equals k, uh, if yeah, if t is k equals k minus two is the same tower, right? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's t minus one, so it's also k minus uh, k minus so k minus three. three, so it's the same tower for. Uh, so basically, here it was the same lower bound for k minus two, k minus one, and k. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe a slightly different topmost exponent here. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, um, so our, our lack of understanding of this was due to our lack of understanding of this. <clears throat> um, and so the more recent results, which is joint work with Drew Mubai and Emily Zhu, is that we were able to determine the tower growth rate for the first Ramsey function that I showed earlier. So we were able to show that this does indeed grow double exponentially in a power of n. And this means that we were able to then determine that case when t equals k minus one, we were able to determine the tower growth rates for this uh, function here. And then we actually showed that for the next case, um, so this isn't actually a new result here. What we showed is actually the methods used in that proof show that you can actually start stepping up actually for at this point, instead of starting the step up process at this point. So since we can start stepping up at this point, this means that, and since there was just a single exponential difference here, uh, this means that there's just uh, one exponential difference in this last case uh, when t equals k. <clears throat> and actually this appears to be quite a difficult problem. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the on my last slide, I guess for obvious reasons. Um, but uh, so now what I'd like to do is, um, so throughout this talk, I guess I've been talking about single versus double exponential and trying to come up with double exponential lower bounds. And so now what I wanted to do is to um, roughly sketch. So actually, I'm not even going to sketch the proof of this. I'm just going to start the proof of this lower bound here, just to give you an idea of how you would possibly come up with uh, a double exponential lower bound. The proof becomes pretty complicated. There's a lot of patterns to look at. And I didn't really want to kind of explain it all in a talk. So what I thought I would do is I would just start the proof and then and then skip all the details uh, at the end. <clears throat> okay, so what are we trying to do here? We're trying to come up with a large five uniform hypergraph where neither of these things happen. So we're trying to construct a five uniform hypergraph such that every six vertices has at most three red edges so that this doesn't happen. And there's no blue clique on little n vertices. So, uh, so what this kind of stepping up process does is, or so what we did is we first looked at the integers one through two to the constant times n and c will be, c is a constant that will be chosen appropriately. And we just randomly color each edge. So each pair, so this will be a graph we randomly color the edges red and blue with just probability one half. So, so half of the, or so some of the edges will be color red, some of the edges will be color blue. But since we color the edges randomly with probability one half, you can easily show that every set of little n vertices contains four vertices with exactly this color pattern here. So every set of little n vertices contains four vertices. 
such that between the first two vertices, it's a red edge. Between the next two vertices, it's a red edge. And then between the next two, it's blue. This is blue, this is red, and then this is blue. <clears throat> and so this isn't so hard to show just using the standard probabilistic uh, method because there's, you know, there's going to be at most this many n tuples. And the probability of avoiding this pattern on an n tuple, or the probability of avoiding this pattern on four vertices is 63 over 64. So this pattern takes order into account in everything. And um, if you have little n vertices, you don't have to worry about all of the four tuples. You can just look at roughly n squared of them um, because you can find n squared of them that do not have two vertices in common. And uh, this is helpful because then these four tuples become independent. And so the probability that you, know, you avoid this pattern just on those uh, four tuples is this quantity over here. And so you can easily show that this is going to be arbitrarily small. <clears throat> so therefore, um, well, we need another property. So therefore, it's quite easy to show that every set of little n vertices, you will have this kind of color pattern here. And uh, another property that we needed was that anytime you set, select three parts of little n vertices, where this comes first and this is next and this is next in the order. And if you fix a matching between the last two parts, then you must have one vertex and one matching edge that has exactly this color pattern here, which is, red edge to the middle vertex or to this middle part, and then blue to this uh, vertex over here in the, in the right part. And so again, it's just another application of the probabilistic method because there's this many ways of choosing the three n sets. And then you fix some matching of size n between the last two parts. And the probability that this is avoided between every pair of vertex and, and edge in this matching, uh, the probability that this color pattern of, is avoided is 3 fourths. And there's going to be n squared such pairs that you have to satisfy. And so if this is completely avoided, then you can show easily that this quantity is going to be arbitrarily small so that uh, you know, so that this, you're guaranteed that this pattern does happen anytime you select uh, n parts, n parts, n parts, and a matching uh, somewhere, there's gotta be a vertex and a matching edge that has this red blue pattern. <clears throat> so this seems kind of weird. Uh, basically we use these properties to make the blue clique small in what I'll describe soon. Um, but so that means that because of those arguments, there is a red blue. So just look at this up here. It is possible to color the edges, the pairs, red and blue, such that every set of little n vertices has a four tuple with that color pattern. And every set of three vertices of size, three vertex sets of size n also has kind of this color pattern that's, um, that is guaranteed in that structure. Okay, so here's that graph. And now we do this thing called stepping up where we take the integers zero through two to the two to the constant times n. There, there should be a minus one here actually because I started at zero. Um, so zero through two to the two to the constant times n minus one. So you take all of these numbers here. For each number, you look at its binary representation uh, like this. So the most significant bits are to the left and the least significant bit is to the right. And uh, the location of these uh, coordinates or these bits correspond to a vertex in the graph. 
And so finally, the way I'll construct my five uniform hypergraph with those nice properties is that this thing on the left here will be my vertex set. And now for every five tuple, I need to decide to color it red or blue. So if I look at, for example, this five tuple here, uh, what I'll do is I'll look at the first two vertices in order, find the most significant bit where they defer, which happens to be here. So this is the most significant bit where they uh, change from zero to one. And then I look at the next two vertices in order, one and two in this case, and I find the most significant bit where it changes, which is this location here. And then I do the same thing for the next two vertices in my five tuple. So this here would be the location of the most significant bit where they defer. And then likewise, I do the same thing for these last two vertices over here. So basically for this five tuple, I have a pattern of these locations where uh, they change where their bits defer. And it forms a pattern. In this case, it forms like a zigzag pattern. These uh, locations where they defer also corresponds to vertices up here in the graph. And so I'll decide to color this five tuple red or blue depending on this, uh, this delta pattern where, the, uh, where these bits defer, and also depending on the color pattern of the graph uh, given above here. <clears throat> so this is the point where I decided to kind of quit because to describe why I color this red based on this and why it's red or blue based on this, it becomes quite complicated. And I don't think it's so, um, so nice to talk about uh, in a talk. But basically, based on this kind of zigzag pattern or monotone pattern created by these uh, red things here, and based on the coloring of the graph up here, that's how I'll decide to color this five tuple red or blue. And so we have two to the two to the constant times n vertices. And what we were able to show is that there is it is possible to to determine a coloring such that every six vertices will have at most three red edges in that five uniform hypergraph. And the key thing here was that the blue clique doesn't really explode. So the largest blue clique you will have is at most n to the fourth. And this essentially follows from a lot of those graph properties, the random graph property up top that we discussed um, earlier. And so therefore, once you establish a hypergraph with all of these properties here, that's what gives us uh, this lower bound um, here, which is um, double exponential in a power of n. <clears throat> OK. Um, so here's my last slide. <laughs> um, so. All of these Ramsey functions that I've talked about, they got kind of ugly, but they boil down to, or at least the open problems, they boil down to these three concrete problems, I would say. Um, all of these three problems, it seems to be our lack of understanding between single and double exponential in N. So this is the diagonal Ramsey number I started off with the off diagonal, and then this is the last open case of the erdos heinel problem. Clearly, this is a lower bound for this. Clearly, we have this, because if you have five vertices with four red edges, or sorry, if you have a red clique on five vertices, then you have five vertices with at least four red edges. And if you have a blue clique on little n vertices, you have a blue clique on little n vertices. And so my point is, is that um, determining that this is double exponential in n seems quite difficult because you know that would imply that this off diagonal Ramsey number uh, also grows double exponential in n. So proving a strong lower bound for this problem is is ha much harder than actually proving a strong lower bound for R four five n. And this is um, the inequality I talked about earlier. So if you do show that 
the diagonal hypergraph Ramsey number R3 and n grows double exponentially in n, then um, this is actually equal to a very closely related function that is a lower bound for uh, this off diagonal Ramsey number over here. <clears throat> so these are, I would say, you know, kind of some interesting uh, open problems, and perhaps maybe this would be the easiest, at least among the three, because solving any of these two would would imply this one over here. Um, okay, and and that's it. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Mm -hmm. You. So for the on the previous slide. Um, there is no such uh, like you have this bottom left relationship, but there is no uh, yeah yeah there is no such relationship between R three of n n and R four of five four n. Yeah, not not that I'm aware. You know, from here to here. Yeah 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 something something yeah. Um, not not that I'm aware of. Um... Okay, and one other question um, that I had. I mean, this is related yeah. to it's it's basically a path. Just there's just two edges um, in a four uniform hypergraph. I'm just trying to think. Um, there there might be um, there might be. So this is closely related. So this is actually exactly um, a red monotone path. So five vertices where the first four tuple is red, and then the next four tuple is red, or blue clique of size n. So that's exactly, or very close to R3 and n. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I can't think right now, but basically, maybe that's it, it would be cool if there, there, is a, there is a, instead of these two inequalities, there is one kind of long inequality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, yeah. um, one other question that I had. So on this, in this stepping up uh, procedure, so you had this red and blue colors on the top and this was uniform, right? You, you were calling, yeah, here you were, the graph on the, uh, in the first, yeah, the graph there the graph is, is uniform. Uh, yeah, 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 but somehow, of course, the colors that you want to assign to the edges are um, very skewed, right? Meaning that you want to produce much more blue edges than these edges. colors here. Yeah, uh, the colors yeah, yeah, for yeah. the tuples. So there is yeah, no. Yeah, the, the five it, so the, this red and blue for the graph, they have nothing to do with uh, red and blue for the edges, actually. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, you want a lot of blue edges. And the problem that we kept coming up with is the blue clique would keep exploding to exponential and n. n. And double exponential and versus exponential, that's just one exponential. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, exactly. So there, there's a lot of uh, blue, edge, blue edges. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, so if not, then well, uh, thanks a lot, Andrew. And it was uh -huh, very, sure. very pleasant to listen to you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a funny problem. Actually, I was expecting, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I forgot about this question. I was expecting some other Erdős Heinal uh, type questions. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. my bad, my bad. But uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't care. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're an expert on different Erdős Heinal questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not, the, uh, it's not the polynomial size clicker independent side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, in any case, thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon in real life. Yeah. <laughs> I'll actually send you an email soon. So if, yeah. if you're interested in visiting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Bye bye, everybody.